September 26th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Hebrews chapter 10 from the New Testament. For the law possesses a shadow of the good things to come, but not the reality itself, and is therefore completely unable, by the same sacrifices offered continually, year after year, to perfect those who come to worship. For otherwise would they not have ceased to be offered, since the worshippers would have been purified once for all, and so have no further consciousness of sin? But in those sacrifices there is a reminder of sins year after year. For the blood of bulls and goats cannot take away sins. So when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. Whole burnt offerings and sin offerings you took no delight in. Then I said, Here I am, I have come. It is written of me in the scroll of the book to do your will, O God. When he says above, Sacrifices and offerings, and whole burnt offerings and sin offerings, you did not desire, nor did you take delight in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he says, Here I am, I have come to do your will. He does away with the first to establish the second. By his will we have been made holy through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands day after day serving and offering the same sacrifices again and again, sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered one sacrifice for sins for all time, he sat down at the right hand of God, where he is now waiting until his enemies are made a footstool for his feet. For by one offering he is perfected for all time those who are made holy. And the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us for after saying, This is the covenant that I will establish with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts and I will inscribe them on their minds. Then he says, Their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no longer. Now where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the fresh and living way that he inaugurated for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart in the assurance that faith brings because we have had our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. And let us hold unwaveringly to the hope that we confess, for the one who made the promise is trustworthy. And let us take thought of how to spur one another on to love and good works, not abandoning our own meetings, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other, and even more so because you see the day drawing near. For if we deliberately keep on sinning after receiving the knowledge of the truth, no further sacrifice for sins is left for us, but only a certain fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume God's enemies. Someone who rejected the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much greater punishment do you think that person deserves who has contempt for the Son of God? and profanes the blood of the covenant that made him holy, and insults the Spirit of grace. For we know the one who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, and again the Lord will judge his people. It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But remember the former days when you endured a harsh conflict of suffering after you were enlightened. At times you were publicly exposed to abuse and afflictions, and at other times you came to share with others who were treated in that way. For in fact you shared the sufferings of those in prison and you accepted the confiscation of your belongings with joy because you knew that you certainly had a better and lasting possession. So do not throw away your confidence because it has great reward. For you need endurance in order to do God's will and so receive what is promised. For just a little longer, and he who is coming will arrive and not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith, and if he shrinks back, I take no pleasure in him. But we are not among those who shrink back and thus perish, but are among those who have faith and preserve their souls. God 
God, today I pray for the meetings of Christians. Um, I think especially in this day of the internet and um, very, very busy families and households that this whole meeting together with other Christians to support and encourage and love and spur one another on has kind of gone to the wayside. I go to a church that has neighborhood group meetings, which means once a week you meet with uh, a smaller group. Uh, and I think that that's good, but I, I think what we really need, I mean, those are important, but I think what we really need are these groups that are, are more like accountability groups where we teach each other, we, we help each other, we guide each other, uh, we encourage each other. Um, I think again, just like we're talking about in the Old Testament, that sometimes we end up in surface relationships that we're not willing to have those harder relationships that can sometimes get emotionally messy uh, with other people. And I think especially for women, we struggle with that. So God, I just pray for opportunities for people to meet outside of just Sunday church and they can delve deeper into your word, into a relationship with you and deeper into relationships with each other. Because I know, especially doing this project, that sometimes when you are so incredibly isolated, you can sometimes get lost or lost multiple times without having a community around you to help you and guide you and hold you accountable to things. Um, I think sometimes people just look at the strong people out there or what they perceive as strong and go, oh, they'll be fine. And you know, they listen to the squeaky wheels. And sometimes it's the strong people who need those groups, who need to be held accountable, who need uh, prayer and support who need to be spurred on when they're incredibly exhausted and don't want to do one more thing. Yet a lot of times those are the ones left alone where other people um, have that support, have that encouragement. So God, I just pray for all those people in that situation that they might be isolated, um, not having a lot of connections or relationships within their church or within the Christian community that you would just provide an opportunity, even if it's just with one person, hopefully it's with more, but with a, a, at least one other person who will support them and encourage them and pray for them, uh, help guide them, uh, get excited for them, and just love them unconditionally as you do us. God, I pray for all those opportunities to have relationships that you'll just make those really clear to our heart. And you'll be in the middle of those relationships with us uh, as we grow together as a community and as your church. In your son's name I pray. Amen.